So let's connect those uh, two Boolean operations that we've discussed, union of sets and intersection of sets, with the previous section, which was talking about this common, these common sets of numbers, the reals, the rationals, and so forth. So if we recall, let's say, uh, the real numbers, again, noted with a uh, boldface R, we could say, well, what's the intersection, for instance, of the reals and the rationals? We want to remember that by our Venn diagram from the previous sections, the rationals are a proper subset of the reals. In other words, they're contained entirely within the reals. So to, to pose a question then, what is the intersection of these two sets is to say, well, what is the set of all common elements in both the reals and the rationals? And by design here with our Venn diagram, we can see that the rationals right, are contained entirely inside the reals. So there is the common set of numbers for the reals and the rationals intersected. On the other hand, if I were to ask, well, what is the union, oh, let's say, of the reals and how about a different set, the integers? Well, once again, I can say, try not to scrunch this, but in here are the integers. Okay, the integers lie inside of the rationals, which lie inside of the reals. So if I take the union of the reals and the integers, I'm asking, collectively, what's the set of all elements in either the reals or, is the operative word, the integers? The answer is the reals, because the reals are a superset of the integers. There is a special set in set theory, and it's called the empty set, and we write it as a zero with a slash through it. Okay, so it's called the empty set, and as you might guess, it's, by definition, the set with no elements. So set with no elements. Now at first blush, it might seem kind of strange. Why would we bother to talk about a set with no elements? What's the use in that? As I will argue in just a moment, the empty set operates in a similar fashion to the number zero in our common number system. So in other words, it acts as a kind of identity element, and I want to show you that here. For example, if we take our set A, let's go back to our universe of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's say the set A, leave that alone as 1, 2, 3. I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Let's say set B consists of just the numbers 4 and 5. Now if I draw a Venn diagram that shows the relationship between A and B, well now I've got A here in our universe and B here. They have no overlap to speak of. They don't share any elements. And when two sets uh, don't have an overlap like this, they're often called disjoint, or you can say synonymously that they are mutually exclusive sets. So in this case, the intersection of A and B, because there is no intersection to speak of, is simply the empty set. Let's see then how the empty set operates like an identity element with respect to sets and Boolean operations. So notice if I take the union of the empty set with any set, we can still refer to our set A. It makes no difference. This uh, property will be true of, of all sets. If I take the union of the empty set and A, what is the set of all elements that are either in the empty set or in the set A? Well, the empty set is empty by definition. So the set of elements that are in the empty set or A is simply just equal to A. Okay. Now, one point out the parallel here with the number zero. You can think of, again, the empty set is kind of operating like a zero. Let's think of the union as a plus, and A we can think of, oh, let's just say lowercase a, would a could be any real number here. Now, of course, when I add zero to any number, any real number a, I get that number back. Ah, So the empty set, in this sense, acts as an identity with respect to sets and the Boolean operation here of union. Conversely, if I take the empty set and I intersect it, let's say with any set or the set A in particular, well, because the empty set is empty by definition, there are no elements common to both sets. So that just produces the empty set when I intersect it with any other set. Once again, I can conceive of the empty set as acting like a zero. Now let's, uh, let's think of the intersection of two sets as the multiplication operation, and the set A all sort of reduced to just a single element or number A. So if I take zero and multiply any number by zero, of course I get zero back. So here, 
we again see a nice analogy with the number zero in our common numbering system. Well, another operation on sets that we can describe quite easily is something called the complement of a set. And the complement of a set in plain language is basically the negation of a set or everything that's not in a particular set. We write the complement of a set, again, let's say A, using a superscript with a C. And so you would just read this aloud, A complement. So the intuitive definition, once again, of A complement is everything in our universe, but that is not in the set A. So I'll write that uh, consistently using set builder notation. So A complement, by definition, is the set of all X, such that X is contained in our universe, but X is not in the set A in this case. So there is the definition of A complement. Once more, we can illuminate that definition with a simple Venn diagram. Here's our universe. Let's say simply that we have the set A. And A complement, therefore, is everything outside of A, but still in our universe. So there's a depiction of A complement as a Venn diagram. For our particular examples here, we could say, well, A complement, again, is everything not in A, but in our universe. So we have one, two, three in A. Anything not in it would consist of just four and five. Similarly, B complement, you can evaluate that as well. Everything not in B, but in our universe, that would consist of the set, the triplet one, two, and five.